everyone it's Shinezi welcome or welcome back to my channel Nezzle and to another vlog in today's video I am going to be showing you guys how to make oil dung except I'm not actually going to be the one who is making the oil dung my uncle Leon is going to be the one doing it I am just facilitating the process I have been asking him to do this video for the channel for quite a while so today it is finally happening so for those of you who have been waiting now is your time so i really hope you guys enjoyed today's video just to give you an idea oil dung is the national dish of grenada and oil dung is made using ingredients such as coconut milk breadfruit other forms of ground provision like green bananas you use chicken turkey any sort of meat that you enjoy you can also add in a little salt fish for flavor some people like to put some salt pork or salt beef you put your herbs your spices your vegetables all of that so you're gonna put it all together in one pot and the end result is fantastic so that is what we are going to do today uncle Leon is going to show you guys his recipe for making oil dung and I hope that you guys try it and that you will let me know if you try it if you like it all of that so their home is located close to the road so I apologize for any noise that you may be hearing but I do hope that you enjoyed the video and if you do then please thumbs it up so that I will know leave a comment and subscribe if you have not yet subscribed join the Nelson fam it is an awesome family to be a part of here on YouTube so subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified every time I Let's make some oil though. So that's the preparation for the oil down here. We're gonna break it here right now. So I'm grating here four coconuts, which is the coconut I got here. Grating it. Equivalent to four breadfruit, so we go like one breadfruit, one coconut. This is the breadfruit that will be going into the pot just now. So we have all of the ingredients already prepared here. So here we have the seasonings, and so we have some thyme, seasoning peppers, garlic, ginger, ginger and other things mixed in here. We have the chicken already nicely seasoned and ready to go into the pot. Some more veggies here like carrots and cabbage. Pumpkin. And oh, there's pumpkin there as well. Then here we have some turkey in the bowl here. Kalaloo, which is important. We have some salt fish. We got the white flour here. But seeing that we don't have the whole with for now, we're going to use some cornmeal. So we got some cornmeal on add into this and we'll make it up together so we'll have cornmeal dumpling about to cut the breadfruit now so we cut it in half then we do it like portions here so we're actually going to peel the breadfruit so as you can see now i'm using some oil here to put on my hand that's to avoid the gummy part from the breadfruit so i'm gonna Make sure my hand is properly moist together with the knife so whenever you finish now everything will be easy to clean i'm going to take off the skin right now right i'm taking out the skin i take off the skin then i'm taking out the guts what we call the guts the belly of it so we don't need the belly right now right so that's how we're going to be looking like and we're going to get it ready for the pot you can see you have a little spot so i'll just take it off but it's not good and sometimes we get breadfruit like that it's not all of them going to be that pretty but we just do it like that because we don't want it to waste so we save as much as we can does the gut do anything to you like no no it's not a problem because when we roast it we actually could eat majority of the gut from it so what's the reason that we remove the gut yeah well that's that's from like just ever since ever since yeah oh so it's not anything to really i don't think it will harm, harm you so if you choose to eat, eat it, all of that then it's not still a problem okay. yeah all right yeah. <laughs> he's telling me now that i'm wasting the breadfruit so i'll try cut it on less of it so i'll try to take off less so as you can see 
right? Because if you realize that most of the time we say the gut is like, it will look like that. Yeah. That's the gut. So you try to get as less. As, yeah. You understand? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm trying to save them because it seems like everyone would like to enjoy that breadfruit. So I want to make sure everybody get breadfruit when it's cooked. Yeah. So I'm doing my best that they could be able to enjoy. See again, we got some spots on that one. So I will have to just take it off like this. That's it. And you're ready. Oh, we got the green bananas here. So we're gonna put this. This is really nice when you put the green banana. Everyone loves to have a banana when oil long is cooked. So I'm gonna peel a few grains of it here. See, it's really white. All is the starchy food, right? So we got bread food, we got bananas. Bananas are very small, as you can see. <laughs> so I hope when I put it in a pot, it doesn't actually they, it doesn't disappear. <laughs> but we, well, actually everything will be steaming, so it's not like a soup. We got those bananas at a supermarket yesterday, but those were the only ones they had, so we had to settle for the little ones because we don't have any on the, our tree right now. Normally we use this here to do like a beet juice or we do like beet salad but today I'm going to use a beet to just make it a little bit more which red red yeah so <laughs> we'll get a taste of the the beet in that pot yeah. yeah and beet is also really nutritious you know very good for your blood and good health overall by right I should not be peeling it I should be just scraping it and then just cut it and put it in a pot but I decided to peel it today so now we're gonna get rid of the breadfruit bodies here, put it into that. Thanks. And all of this will go into the land so that it can fertilize or serve as a form of manure for the That's land. It. So we're not wasting anything guys. All about sustainable. We're trying to be as sustainable as we can be. Just rinse off everything. Yeah, so now I'm gonna cut a lime and we just wash it out after doing everything. Squeeze some limes in it. We're gonna wash this with some lime. So we see we call we take out the little rack in it. Sometimes you know the stain and we mix it up together. Then I will also clean out all you see you will see all the stuff here. But when we're ready to put it into the pot, we'll actually get this clean out nicely. So for now, I'm just washing it and leave it there still, and we get on to something else. So we're just peeling up some radish here. We have two, so we're gonna add that to the vegetables that are going to go into the pot as well. Coconut. Normally we like do the um, saffron, we say turmeric, but saffron we normally grate it together with the coconut that's when we we'll get it yellow. But we're going to use the turmeric, the powder today, instead of having to grate and get all my hand yellow. So we're going to just use the powder today. Yeah. I'm putting some water here, that's to get the milk, milk out of this coconut here now. I'm going to squeeze this here now. Guys, see how it's getting nice and milky already? Nice and creamy. That's it right there, and it smells so good. We're gonna use this after. We have to use it, give it another squeeze. So that's just, we call that the first round. Normally you say that's the coconut hoshi. So if you wanted the coconut tart, that's what you're gonna use here to the coconut tart. So now we're gonna strain it into this pot here. That's not, this is not the pot we're gonna cook in, but we're gonna use this one just to put the coconut water here. 
coconut milk. Coconut milk, sorry. So what is looking brown here? That's the back of the coconut, right? That's the back of the coconut. So it's just looking like that, this brown part here. So we're gonna squeeze this and get out all the milk that we need from it. And now we're gonna throw it back into this bowl here. Throwing everything here, we're gonna squeeze it once again. Remember I said the first round, now we're going to the second round of squeezing that. So we try to get as much as we can out of it. So we actually will fill this pot up because we actually go into that big pot here. So we got to get a lot of milk. This pot is an aged pot. We've had it for quite some time. As you can see, it has, it has cooked many, many pots of oil down. Yeah, normally we'll cook this pot, pot like this. We'll have it on firewood. But yes. today we choose to have it inside. On the stove. So we're doing an indoor cooking. So it's going to be on the stove. So we actually fill it up that small pot. We're not gonna use all, but sometimes what we do, we're gonna save it and put it in the freezer. We put it in bags and put it in. So normally when we do in a small pot, we'll have coconut milk. To use. To use. So we don't have to go buy in, in the shop. Yes, that way we avoid the, the tins or the packets of coconut. So now we're gonna pour some of the milk here into the pot. Because we gotta have a nice level so all the the food will actually like a breadfruit will get water to cook. Remember I told you that we normally use saffron and we grate it with the coconut but now we're gonna use the turmeric that's the powder so I'm putting as much as we can so we get the spot really looking yellow so you're gonna look like oil on. One packet here we actually use about half of this. Cayenne pepper Nice and spicy. We got some cinnamon right here. And we got the clove here. Now we're about to put in the herbs, guys. All right, so we're gonna put some of these herbs here actually to get the pot saturated, like the, the water. We're gonna be like giving it a little heat up and then we're gonna start packing everything in there. Seasoning pepper here, seasoning pepper. So we normally use this a lot on the island. The garlic here. Normally we'll grate it, but seeing that it's oil down, we're gonna just leave it like this. I love using garlic, and um, so I will put sometimes like in a pot like this, you use like one head of garlic. Ginger, so I'm gonna just cut it into like small pieces. Good fresh ginger. And we got some big time, that's big time. We use that as a seasoning and we also use it as tea. Yes, I've had big time tea, it's quite nice. Yeah. A little bit of sive because we got a lot of seasoning so I don't want to put too much in this. Put a little bit of curry in this here. So we blend it up nicely with a little curry. Just to flavor it up. Stirring this up now so you get a color from that pot, from that. Ooh, guys, see the steam nicely coming out? Right, so for me, I think we're gonna put a little more turmeric because it's looking a little bit so we need some more. A little more color. Normally we use the Goya, but I love using the salt. So I'll just put a little salt, because we actually have the meat seasoned up, so we don't have, we want to put much salt into the pot. Coconut oil here, so I'm going to put a little bit in it here. So you got an oily oil down. It's how you change it up then. Mm -hmm. Getting ready to put the breadfruit into the pot. So now we're gonna put some of the breadfruit in this pot here. If you look at it, it's steaming already. This is the turkey wing. It's a little bit tough, so we're gonna put it actually to the bottom of the pot. Normally I'll pack it right around so that when you're dipping into the pot you get to your dish. Everywhere you turn you will get a piece of meat. I'm gonna put it right around in the middle so no one person will get like two and three pieces. Unless they go right around the pot. Yeah. I don't want anyone to go digging up my pot when it's finished cooking. I want everything to just come out on one end. Make sure properly done. So that's the drumstick here. I'm gonna use my hands, it's clean. I just wash it out and stuff, but I'm going to use the drumstick. You look at the chicken, mm -hmm. properly seasoned here. 
Now I'm gonna put a little kalalu, and I love putting kalalu, so I mix it up a little bit. So I'm gonna put some kalalu right now. So in and between, we got some kalalu there. And kalalu is the dashi leaf, very high in iron, high in vitamin A and vitamin K. So we have some more breadfruit and green bananas added to the pot. Smelling so good, right. guys. So now I'm gonna put the rest of the meat here. Guys, could you imagine that we had this whole bowl here full of meat? and everything is down into that pot right now these are some of the vegetables we got here now we got the pumpkin here we got cabbage carrots and the beets also so we are going to put this into the pot right now so look at the colors guys the colors the colors very beautiful mm, yes i'm going to put the carrot in a way that everyone can get a piece when it's cooked Now we're gonna put some more kalalu. More kalalu. So we got a mixture of everything here now. Guys, we still got the flour dumpling to put in here. Yes. So can you imagine what's happening here? It's a huge pot. Just as much we have to use more coconut water. Milk. More coconut milk, sorry. <laughs> still got some beans and some okra to put in it also. Mmm, yummy. Guys, comment and say how excited you are to try this recipe. And also let me know if you try it. I'm doing a little more ginger here, so I'm grating some and I have a little more coconut milk. So then I add it into the pot just now. Adding my favorite seasoning, some Goya seasoning. A little salt fish that's just to flavor the pot. So I'm gonna put it in this here. Why is I gonna add some warm water here? Boiling water and then add this to the pot. With all the seasoning here mm. and the salt fish. Yep. So that would be right at the top of the pot. When you're gonna mix up the kalalu and the okra and the beans, everything will be in one. Guys, I've been going for a while now. I've been, I'm thirsty, so I'm having some water here. Lenella, spring water. So everyone, this is the chef, Uncle Leon. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm getting ready here now to do the flour. We're gonna mix the flour here. That's gonna be for dumpling. Yes. So, so we're gonna. We have the cornmeal. Yep. And white flour. So we're gonna do a cornmeal dumpling. Right, so I'm going to mix all this together. If you realize, I'm not going to put any salt in there. I'm going to just use the flour and the water. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a little bit of coconut milk to do the flour. Ooh, okay. Yeah? So that's what I'm doing here. Nice. Coconut milk will be using for the flour. Guys, I love dumplings. So I'm excited. I'm going to do a mixture here. Adding some hot water to the mixture from before. We don't want the pot to be dry and no water in it. So we need water from this. Yeah. Right around. Stir it along. Right. And then it's in the cup. Mm. Mm. How are you looking there? See how much water in it. Looking good guys. And in case you don't know, this is my brother. Okay. Funny, so. I know right? I was like, wait, that's not your name. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe when you stop clanging the pot. Flour, you're getting ready. Ready? Yes, yeah, so we I'll need start pressing flour. pressing that dumpling here now. That flour. Everyone saying that they need tight dumpling. Yeah, nice and steep. hard. Nice and hard, yeah? If you look at it now, you see that flour here is looking a little bit yellowy, right? Because mm -hmm. that's the cornmeal together with the flour so everything now will change different color here now. so now we're going to take this and rest it here because we've got that some of it and i'm going to mix the next set here right so i'm going to put back this here now and i'm going to mix all of them together Like I could say four cups of flour. <laughs> 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 you could do for the ingredient. <laughs> well, 
Well, actually, this is like one pound of flour. We can take about one pound. About one pound? Yeah. We could make any amount of dumpling we want of this. Small, yeah. large, whatever you want. But actually, you will get quite a. They make a lot of small ones because we like them small. And Uncle Leon likes to make some nice, interesting shapes <laughs> with the dumplings. I don't know if he will do a special for y'all today. And then we're going to get it into that pot maybe five minutes from now. We're going to get ready to put the dumpling in the pot. So I'm going to do another press on it. If you realize it's really stiff. You will see how it's getting like smooth now. Because mm -hmm. it's just resting a little bit. I'm putting a lot of pressure onto this here. Just because everyone wants the dumpling to be going like pigs. <laughs> we're eating it. Right, look at that. Ooh, that look good. It's very smooth, right? Yeah. Yeah. So now, sometime we do it like this. We're gonna just like pull it like this and do the dumpling. Most time we just cut it in half and we separate it how we want it. So if we want different sizes, mm. do like this. Right. Now I'm gonna prepare it for rolling and then getting it into the pot guys i hope this is gonna come out really good because yes. cause this lady here been bugging me for quite a while <laughs> <laughs> yes it was promised a while now yeah so i'm just trying my best here you normally we should have a pot like this on the firewood outside smoking and turning you know getting everything real big outside there but we choose to have it indoors today Can you imagine one person going to be eating something like this? No, no. We could actually get like three, four dumplings from this. Now we start rolling the dumplings here. So we have all different sizes here. So I'm going to do a conk. So based on how many people are here, they will, everyone will get two or three. So if I see any four dumplings in one plate, I'll take it off. <laughs> <laughs> I have to hide my dumpling under some breadfruit. What we call a flat dumpling. It's not really yeah. big. Normally we make huge ones, but um, just a tiny one. So you don't have to really cut it to put it into your plate. So if it's like five persons here, I'm going to do five of this. So everyone going to get one. Not to the best looking, but at the same time, you know. Tastes good. So the numbers went up to eight, right? You could see the steam coming from there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, snake. <laughs> that one is yours. No. As a chef dumpling. Right, so she's wondering what I'm doing with this one. But remember she said that I would be doing different sizes, different shapes. So sometimes we do like soup, so we like cut it like this. And I'm not going to roll it or anything, I'm just going to do it like that. Mm. Like some little, what's that called, like a little spring roll kind of looking right. thing? that's it. So now we're going to put this in the pot, if you realize I didn't open it up because I didn't want the steam to get out. So I'm going to quickly put the flour in there, dumpling. No longer flow, we say dumpling. Yeah. One of the best parts of the oil lung, in my opinion. That's it. Right, guys, if you realize we didn't taste that part as yet, to just to check and make sure it's enough salt, enough pepper. And I think we're gonna do a, a little tasting, try to get some sauce because it's actually steaming now. Take a little from the spoon and we're gonna do a little. For me, it's good. I'll cover down this pot here with a little leaf, that's the kalalu leaves. I didn't cut up this one, so I'm just going to cover everything here and leave it like this. Mm. So everything is covered. I'm going to check it back in about half hour or so. Ooh, lots of steam. Looking good guys. Just a few more minutes. for another 20 minutes or so. Alright guys, so the food is ready. We just took it off. Let me show you all the final product. Woo. 
looks good. The dumplings look nice and tasty. So, time for the big taste. Mm. The breakfast is good. Everyone has a huge plate. Mm. Everything is good. Mm. <laughs> Are you enjoying it, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Swordfish. Five and five, man. Five and five. Real All done, guys. Mm, just grab it. <laughs> we ate all. It was really, really good. And as you can see, the pot is empty. So y'all have to try the recipe. Make sure and let me know if you try. Alright guys, so we have come to the end of this video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed seeing the making of the oil dung, the eating of the oil dung, all the good stuff. So if you did then please remember to thumbs it up so that I will know. Leave a comment in the comment section letting me know your thoughts on the video. Remember to let me know if you have made oil down before, how you make it, maybe you do it differently or if you're going to try the way that we did it. And of course subscribe if you're new to the channel or if you have not yet subscribed then subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified every time I post. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys in my next video.